conversion of planes, this time from parametric representation to normal representation. The thing you have to do is you have to first you have to know what is the normal representation, how does it look like, and then you have to find the normal vector based on the parametric representation, which is also not too complicated, it's a little bit tricky. You have to, to practice it maybe a few times, and but then it's quite easy actually, because one point you take out of the the parametric representation and the normal vector you have to calculate and then you got it already. So this is not too complicated. There are much more difficult exercise types. So this is really quite easy. I'm going to show you how it works in the following clip. How to convert planes, this time from parametric representation to normal representation. This is actually a little bit tricky, but also not too difficult, and I'm going to show you the calculation with an example. So we have a plane in parametric representation called E, which is minus 1, 3, 5. This is the support vector, plus U times 1, minus 3, 7, one directional vector, and we need another one for the plane. And that is 1, 10, and 8. And please note that u and v are both element r, so both are just some sort of numbers and not vectors. Vectors are, however, this one I call u, and this vector is, uh, this is also a vector called v. This is a support vector, and I just call it p. Now, what do we want to achieve? We want to have the normal representation, which is the following. So we also have E, this time, X minus P. So this is the support vector of the plane. And then we need to multiply with the normal vector and then equal zero. So how to get the normal vector? P we already have, we can just take the vector from above, but normal vector we don't know. But we have two vectors given, or, uh, which are part of the plane, so we know it's just some vectors, two vectors in the plane. Then we know, okay, this is the plane, and now what we want to do is calculate a vector with, uh, which is 90 degrees to both of those vectors, right? 90 degrees. We don't really need to have a straight line. It can be a vector, so a vector can be moved, right? Since a vector is not a straight line. A straight line is fixed and goes through a point. Also, a plane is fixed and goes through a point, or goes through many points, but goes through fixed points, so you can't just move it. But a normal vector itself, you can move, and that's why we also need, for the, for the plane, we also need to have a point to make it a little bit more concrete. So, but how to calculate all this? So the definition, actually there, there are two ways how to calculate the normal vector. One is easily the cross product, but my problem is always I forget about the cross product. You need a formula, you, you have to learn it by heart, you have to do some practice, uh, you need practice to keep it in your head. But I always forget about the cross product. So you, you can look it up. There's a formula for the cross product. Just take those two vectors and calculate the cross product. Take this normal vector and you're fine. But the other thing is, when you forget about the cross product, you can still calculate. Maybe you need a second more, but it's possible. So you just need to raise two assumptions, which are actually which are implied by the definition of the normal vector. The normal vector has an angle of 90 degrees to both of those vectors. So first condition, uh, and those 90 degrees we can define as following. So we say n times our vector u has to be zero. This is the definition actually of 90 degrees directly. Second, we have to say n also with v has to be 90 degrees. So in this case, we say zero because we have the uh, vector product. So this is our assumption. And we can solve this with a uh, matrix. So what are we going to do? We just write both vectors uh, component wise. So this uh, times n has to equal zero. So we just say n1 u1 plus n2 u3 plus n3 u3 
equals zero. That's what we are going to do. So we just say one. We have one and one minus three and two plus seven and three equals zero. Next two. We have one and one plus ten and two plus eight and three equals zero. Then go over to the matrix. 1, minus 3, 7, 0, 1, 10, 8, 0. If you have a calculator which can do that, then use the calculator. If you don't have a calculator, use your head. It's also one way to do this. And we say 1a is simply 1 minus 2. Then we see 1a. We end up with 0. 1 is minus 3. Minus 10 is minus 13. 7 minus 8 is minus 1, 0. Now, 2a, what can we do? So we try to work out something here in the middle. So we say 3 times 2, then we have 30, plus 10 times 1, then we have also 30. 30 minus 30 equals 0, so we can say we have a 0 here. That's 2a. And then what, what's going to happen here in the front? So we have 3 times 2, which is 3 plus 10 times 1 is 10 together 13. Back here we have 3 times 2, which is 24. And we have a 7 times 10, which is 70, 94. So we have 94 here and 0 here at the back. So, now we see we have one information less actually than that we would need to determine all the components directly, all the components specifically, so we have to introduce a parameter. We say that in this case the third one is t, so n3 equals t. Then we can say n2 is, so plus t, so we have one t, 1t and we have to divide by minus 13 so we have uh, minus 13 plus t we say first let's say t we have t on the right side and then we have to divide by minus uh, 13 so we have uh, times something like this right again so uh, minus 1 13t this is better Right. So, and n1, there we have, we put the 94 also to the right side, so we have minus 94, minus 94 divided by 13 and with a t. So now we have found the general vector, which is nt, a general normal vector, which is then minus 94 divided by 13t, minus 1 divided by 13 t and t. This is a general normal vector and to make life easy we want to multiply or we want to set t 13 to get, receive some nice values. So we say n 13 is minus 94 minus 1 and 13. And then we have obtained a uh, good normal vector, or all normal vectors actually here, here a specific normal vector which we can use for our normal representation. And we didn't have to remember the formula for the cross product. If you know the formula for the cross product, you might, may be faster, you don't need this half page, but you, of course you need a, a calculation more. Uh, whatever you do, you have to do it right and you have to be fast, and I usually do it like this because I don't have to remember the formula and I know I can calculate it right and relatively fast. So I stick with this method, but I also know like YouTube users wrote me a lot to, to the video that they prefer the cross product since it's a little bit faster and they like to learn formulas by heart. So whatever, you have to be able to, to write it down quickly and correct. Don't make any mistakes. I like matrices, so I do it like this. Then final step, we just have to write down our normal representation of our plane, which is, we already have the definition above, right here. This, of course, you have to remember, this is essential. This is more essential than knowing actually the, the vectors. This is uh, the definition what we seek. 
And now we can just insert our solution. So we have vector x minus p. p we already know, if you remember. This is the vector above, support vector, minus 1, 3, 5 times the normal vector. And the normal vector we just calculated times minus 94 minus 1 and 13 equals 0. That's our solution. So as you saw, it's not too too complicated. It's possible to calculate also relatively quickly. You should know this is essential, the definition of the normal representation. Then you should know this is a support vector and those are two directional vectors. And then you can calculate the normal vector based on those two directional vectors either with this definition, with the matrix, with the Gaussian algorithm that I just did here, or you can apply if you know the formula or if you're allowed to have some formula book with you in the exam, you can also use the cross product. You have to find out which you like more and with which you make less mistakes or no mistakes at all in this case and with which you are very comfortable. And I'm comfortable with this method, so I just calculate it like this. So this is how it works. Conversion of planes parametric representation to normal representation. Thanks for watching. Practice makes perfect further exercises with solutions you can find on my website, which is www.worksheets.com.